Oh, this residence. It's evil. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Billy Cobb channel. Today I have another gaming video for Halloween. For the past year or so, I've been on quite the Resident Evil kick. As you can see here, I got my classic Resident Evil shirt and I got my win winged insignia key from Resident Evil 8. And I thought a fun thing to do for Halloween would be to rank the mainline Resident Evil titles. And yes, I say the mainline titles because there are so many goddamn Resident Evil games and I have not played all of them. Um, and I'm also not including the Revelations games because one, I haven't played them, and two, I don't believe they are included in the mainline titles. That being said, Code Veronica will be included, which I believe is a mainline title. So we're gonna be doing worst to best here, um, but and that's gonna be like the main list, but I'm also gonna be kind of dividing it into three lists just for fun. We're gonna be talking about the obviously the main one, worst uh, Resident Evil mainline game to the best Resident Evil mainline game in my humble opinion. But we're also going to make a list for the scariest to least scariest or vice versa, as well as the easiest to hardest. Also, I do a lot of these kind of essay videos with a script and sometimes I feel like that might come off better like writing wise and and I might formulate my opinions better and articulate them better but for this video I'm just gonna be yapping uh, what comes to mind and it's gonna be completely off the top of my head uh, just my thoughts on every game so I might miss something I might say something that's not completely uh, developed or whatever but regardless I'm just gonna list these and give my thoughts and I'll be giving every one of these a ranking out of 10 as well starting with the worst Coming in at last place, I have Resident Evil 6. Now, I had heard a lot of bad things about Resident Evil 6 going into it, and there have been times when I've heard bad things about Resident Evil games that I go back and I play them, and sometimes I'm like, yeah, I understand where the criticism comes from, and other times I see it in a different light, and I'm like, I can enjoy this for what it is. And without spoiling too much, there was other co-op Resident Evil experiences that I very much enjoyed, and I thought, hey, this game might technically be bad on paper, but maybe if I play it with a friend, it could just be a campy fun game. And for a moment, I thought this was the case. See, I had heard that Resident Evil 6 was a far cry from the origins of the series, that it wasn't scary, it's action-packed. So I thought, okay, if I go into this expecting like a B-movie, like action-packed, campy fuckfest, then I might enjoy it, especially with a friend, because co-op can enhance that kind of experience tenfold. And for a moment, I thought that was the case when I played the intro. Immediately, there was just explosions everywhere, just completely highly over the top, and I thought it was fucking hilarious. I was like, I love this. This is like just all the corniness of Resident Evil turned up to 10, and it was great. Then I got to the actual campaign. And that's when I started playing with my friend, who I had also played Resident Evil 5 with. And right away from Leon's campaign, it was not fun. The story wasn't interesting, the level design was horrible, especially in Leon's campaign. There was like tons of disgusting defend the people situations. Coop yourself up in a room and defend it for ungodly amounts of times. Like, I, I, I respect diversity and level design and like those kinds of levels are okay now and then, but like I feel like for half of Leon's campaign, it was just that, and it was not fun. I mean, story-wise and gameplay-wise, there was really nothing I liked about Leon's campaign. Some of the visuals were pretty decent, and it got a little bit better towards the end, but overall, not a fan of Leon's campaign. Chris's campaign I enjoyed a little bit more because it kind of hones in on the action-packed part of the game, which in part kind of sucks because it feels nothing like Resident Evil, but if you just look at it as just like a plain shooter, it's kind of fun. I thought the story for Chris's campaign was better. I really like what they did with Pierce's character. Then we go into Jake's campaign, and already this campaign is like the whole story in total is feeling really long. Jake's campaign story-wise was probably my favorite of the bunch, but what I hated was that they just, for both Jake's and Ada's campaign, they just completely like redid entire sections of the game. Like you're just replaying the same section from a previous part of the game entirely and and they were 
and they're not even good sections either like it's maybe they were okay like the first time but the second time especially they were just not fun and and his campaign was just terrible it felt like it was undercooked the fact that the co-op partner was practically non-existent the story didn't wrap up in the most satisfying way the level design was boring and once again felt unfinished this was this is probably the only game on this list that i can confidently say i did not like some things I did appreciate about it was I did appreciate the multifaceted storytelling. While I didn't think the story was incredible, I do appreciate a story with a lot of moving parts and I liked how all of the different campaigns wrapped together. I like viewing the same story from lots of different parts. It's like a big anthology. I like that much about it. And also the control scheme is very good. There's lots of cool takedowns and things that you can do. But overall, was not a fan of Resident Evil 6, was highly disappointed in it, and I'm very, very, very thankful that they went in a different direction after it. I'd give this game a 4 out of 10. So this falls dead last on my worst to best ranking. I would also rank it as the least scariest game in the franchise as well, mostly due to just it being overblown balls to the wall action. And for easiest to hardest, it was relatively easy, but there were moments that were rather challenging. I'd put it at 11th out of 14. What have you done? Moving on to Resident Evil Zero. Now, it really does kind of pain me to put this so low because I think the game really did have a lot of potential. It nails it atmospherically and I like the different level designs. It's very much in tone with Resident Evil 1 Remake in that aspect. I even thought the switching between characters was an interesting addition and I kind of liked it. Of, of course, the limited inventory space was a lot to manage and was very annoying at parts, but I did like how being able to switch between characters kind of added a lot of depth to a lot of the puzzles and introduced a lot of new kinds of puzzles. And I also really love both Rebecca and Billy. My favorite part of this game was the first level, the train level, because I found it to be the most manageable both inventory wise, map navigation wise, and switching between characters wise. And a big massive feature that a lot of people complain about in this game is the inability to store items and you have to place down your items and then go back for them later where to get them where you left them and at the start of the game i did not find this to be a problem because the train is relatively small and there weren't too many items that i felt i needed to go back to so it was like okay this this kind of works i like i even liked it to an extent and then spoiler alert you get to a part where the train crashes and you move on to another level and all of the items from the train that you picked up and put down or whatever are now stored in a completely different room. It's like, okay, so everything I missed or everything I left behind is in this room. And then you expect that to continue for every time that you unlock a new portion of the level, which it just does not. And this is where the game really falters when it comes to the inventory system, because there are items that you will have to go back and get much later down the game that you left like literally like two to three hours pre prior in gameplay. So like, for example, the grapple shot or whatever it was called, major pain in the ass. You would have to just walk back room after room after room to go and find this thing or just whatever you're looking for. And, and just navigating and the management system for the inventory was just brings down this game like so many tears. And it sucks because the game has so much potential. It's just that one feature especially brings it down a ton. Other things I didn't like about the game was the main villain uh, not only was very strange and almost didn't feel like he belonged in Resident Evil, but the build up to his final boss battle was extremely underwhelming as opposed to some other RE titles where the boss kind of like appears here and there or like builds up their, their presence over time throughout the story. For this it was like Billy and Rebecca had no idea essentially who this guy was and then he just shows up at the end and it's like oh fuck i guess we gotta kill this guy too on top of that a lot of the boss fights were just like aim and shoot really boring not not well designed so while i like this game atmospherically and i think it has a lot of great ideas and characters and levels there's a lot that brings it down as well overall i'd give this game a six out of ten it was I'd say a little better than average, but not great. At scariest to least scariest, I would put this at number 10 out of 14. While atmospherically it does feel a lot like Resident Evil 1 Remake, it wasn't nearly as frightening, and a lot of the enemy types were not necessarily high tension to fight, except for one. The one slug dude that like comes out of nowhere and the music gets really intense and he's really hard to kill, 
and he like moves all creepily, every time one of those guys showed up, it was panic mode. So that brung the game up quite a few tiers for the scary factor. But overall, not very scary. And as far as easiest to hardest, uh, this was one of the hardest games in the franchise due to the inventory system especially. I'd put this all the way up at number two. Uh. <laughs> Alexia? Next on the list, and this is going to disappoint a lot of people, is Resident Evil Co-Veronica. Now, while there are a lot of things to admire about this game, I like how they kind of brought it from a fixed camera perspective into a 3D, more of a 3D perspective. I like that the world kind of acts as a sort of hub almost, where you go from building to building, as opposed to just like level after level, like the previous Resident Evil games worked. It's like you're navigating in between levels to find different things, kind of, and I like that about it. The inventory wasn't that bad, and the story at its core was quite good, and it adds a lot to the Resident Evil lore. That being said, it is by far the campiest game in the franchise. I mean, my god, is this game cheesy. Watching Wesker roundhouse kick Jill gets me every fucking time. Stay there. I'm coming. The dialogue, the delivery, the pacing, the animations, everything is just so hilarious. Which is a good thing and a bad thing depending on how you want to look at the game. Personally, I think Resident Evil should have a mix of both scary and silly. And this was just over the top silliness. On top of the campiness, uh, another reason why this game is so low on my list is just because of how difficult and downright unfair it was at times. There are moments where it will kill you because you were just completely not expecting something to happen, something that you couldn't have possibly prepared for, and there's like no way of going back to fix that. Some of the boss fights in this game were near impossible to be. The Steve boss fight in particular, piece of shit. You could barely escape without dying, and every time you did die, it brought you back, like, so far, and there was no way of saving sooner than that. So yeah, the best thing I can say about Code Veronica is I like the story, I like some of the gameplay elements and the level design, but the difficulty especially brought it down quite a bit. And I also felt that at this point, while I love the- I love the fixed camera Resident Evil style, it does feel like at this point it's getting a little bit tired, and they needed to switch it up just a little bit more. And they kind of did with the 3D perspective, but in a way it feels like more of the same. Yeah, the game was just okay. I don't really see myself going back to this one. Code Veronica gets a 6 out of 10. As far as how scary it is, it falls on number 12 on my list. Not very scary. It did have its tense moments, but nothing really frightening. Oh, and I will say there was a genuinely good twist that I really enjoyed. And as far as easiest to hardest goes, this goes all the way to number 1. Code Veronica, easily the hardest Resident Evil game that I've played. And it's not that I don't appreciate a challenge, it's just the fact that it was just downright not fair at times. That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right! Next up on the list is the original Resident Evil. Now there is a lot to admire about this game. While it may not be the very first survival horror game, it is the game that puts survival horror on the map, and it is considered one of the best horror games ever made. In many ways, it was the first of its kind, and there's a lot to admire about that. But, that being said, it has aged kind of poorly. Look, the core Resident Evil gameplay is there, right? The, the puzzles, the jump scares, the level design. I mean, it is the original Resident Evil. What brings this game down so far on the list is just that there are so many other Resident Evil games that have done it better. And without spoiling too much, I feel like there's no point in playing this version of the game when you could just play the remake, which is like a million times better. The one thing I did like better about the original than the remake though was the Hunters. I never really found the game all that terrifying or, or stressful up until the point where the Hunters show up. And up until I played this game, I had played a lot of different Resident Evils before it, and I had dealt with Hunters before, and I never really found them to be that menacing. But in this game, they were the worst. They were fast as hell, they were everywhere, they were quick to kill you. The Hunters brought the fear factor of this game up so much, and made it a lot more enjoyable. So like, the, like I'd say like the last third of the game was a lot more enjoyable than the first two 
two-thirds. Also, just behind Code Veronica, this game is extremely and notoriously campy, which is fun and to some might even make it better, but... But yeah, overall, decent game, great for the time, great for what it is and solidifying itself as a survival horror staple and building this incredible franchise, but there are plenty of other Resident Evil games that just turn it up to 11. I give the original Resident Evil a 6.5 out of 10. As far as the scary factor on the list, while normally it's not that scary, like I said, the hunters add a lot of stress and a lot of terrifying nature to the game, which bumps it all the way up to number 7 on my list. And as far as easiest to hardest goes, it's pretty up there on the difficulty scale, landing at number 4. Up next on the list is Resident Evil 5. Now Resident Evil 5, despite being seemingly low on this list, is actually a very good game. I remember the game getting some criticism for not being scary enough, not feeling enough like Resident Evil, and just overall being too action focused. And while I get these criticisms, I still think there is enough horror aspects of the game to keep it somewhat in the spirit of Resident Evil. But I do kind of agree with these criticisms to an extent, but I can forgive most of that because this game is a hell of a lot of fun, especially with a co-op partner. I did not play this game solo, so I don't know what it's like. I've heard some pretty bad things about the Shiva AI, but playing with a partner, this game was a blast. Not only was the story engaging and the levels were really fun to play through, but I loved the controls and the interactions with the other player. Lots of things to laugh at, lots of things to scream at. It's honestly one of the best co-op experiences I've ever had. So while Resident Evil 5 may not act as the best Resident Evil title, it still deserves to be recognized as a great game in my opinion, just for how fun it is. But to an extent, I do agree with the criticisms that it is a little bit of a jump from the Resident Evil formula, a little bit too far of a jump. But in some ways, in many ways, it just feels like a co-op Resident Evil 4, which is pretty much a recipe for success in many ways. So yeah, overall, while I don't think Resident Evil 5 is the best Resident Evil experience necessarily, it's still a really fun co-op game. I'd give this one a 7 out of 10. As far as scariest to least scariest goes, this one is not very scary. I'd put it second to last. There was like maybe one or two sections which were very high tension, but I wouldn't necessarily call them scary. And as far as easiest to hardest goes, this was definitely one of the easier titles in the franchise. It's landing at second to last, number 13. Next on my list of worst to best, I have Resident Evil 3 Remake. Now, I think to a lot of Resident Evil fans, this is going to be seemingly a little too high, but allow me to explain myself. I will say that I think that Resident Evil 3 Remake fails as a remake of Resident Evil 3. A lot of the events of the original Resident Evil 3 are either moved around drastically or just cut entirely to a point where it's almost unrecognizable as a remake. That being said, I do think it is a good retelling of the story. Yes, things happen rather differently, but ultimately it leads to the same outcome and the same events mostly happen. Another big criticism for this game is that it's too short, coming in at about six hours or so of playtime. And had I bought this for full price, I probably would have been pissed as well, but I got it on sale, and I'd say for what I paid for, it was a reasonable length, and I actually really enjoyed how short and sweet it was. I thought the campaign was well-crafted, I liked the different sections, I liked Jill's character, especially I thought Carlos was a major upgrade. I don't know if I'd call him a major upgrade because I do like the original Carlos a lot. I think the original Carlos is kind of like a, like he, he acts like a hard ass, but deep down inside he's like a caring person. While in this game, he was more of just like a, a hard ass softy, like same kind of thing, but he was more, more on the soft side, I think. But no, I thought the characters were enjoyable. I thought the story played out like a movie. The writing was decent. The level design was decent. The visuals were decent. After hearing all the complaints, I went into this game expecting to enjoy it a lot less than I did. And I left feeling pretty satisfied. I will say my biggest complaint about this remake was how they treated Nemesis. While there was one section where it was very high tension and was somewhat in the line of what the original, how the original Nemesis behaved, most of it was just 
running away from him in very scripted sequences, while in the original he was just a force to be reckoned with and added so much to the game. So that was pretty disappointing. But overall, I think it was a pretty solid game, and I'd give it like a 7.5 out of 10. As far as scariest to least scariest, I was not expecting this one to be that scary, and it there's definitely way scarier titles in the Resident Evil franchise, but it was scarier than I expected. It had some good spooky moments. The hospital in particular has some great spooky moments. So I'd put this at number 8, right about smack in the middle of my scary list. And as far as easiest to hardest goes, this one is in last place, being what I thought was the easiest game in the franchise. Next up on the list, I have the original Resident Evil 3. Of the original three Resident Evil games, I really did think this one stood out a lot. While the setting and the level design and the weapons and everything felt unique, I almost felt as if the base game was just a tiny, tiny step down from the first two in some ways. But that being said, Nemesis himself propelled this game so much. Nemesis makes this game as good as it is. When Nemesis shows up, it is extremely tension-filled. It is scary as hell. He is faster than you. He is stronger than you. You cannot kill him or stop him. And you never know when he's gonna show up. Nemesis is awesome. I also like that the game added another perspective to the Raccoon City incident. And then we got to explore the streets of Raccoon City a little bit. And there was, once again, some good diverse level design. So while I don't have too much to say about the original Resident Evil 3, um, I still very much enjoyed it. The the normal Resident Evil elements were there, and Nemesis just propelled everything so much further. I'd give this game a solid 8 out of 10. On scariest to least scariest, this one is, I'd say, somewhat one of the scarier titles in the franchise, especially for Nemesis, because every time he shows up, it is very, very heart-pounding. I put this at number 6 on my scary list. And as far as easiest to hardest goes, it wasn't too hard, it wasn't too easy, I'd put this one right in the middle at number 8, as far as how hard it was. But yeah, Resident Evil 3, great game. Hold your fire! I'm a human! Ooh. Sorry about that, babe. Up next on my worst to best list is the original Resident Evil 2. What I think is the best of the original three Resident Evil games. This game takes the formula of the first game and just improves on it in almost every single way. The story is a lot more masterfully crafted and it actually has a more serious tone to it. The setting of it being in a police station is absolutely brilliant. There is plenty of scares and high tension moments in this game and the exploration and the horror are masterfully done. And this game is just so expansive with two different characters to play as with two different scenarios for each character. It is a miracle that they managed to fit this entire game somehow on a Nintendo 64 cartridge. To put that into perspective, uh, the PlayStation 1 version had two discs, and each disc could hold about 700 megabytes of space, and they needed both of those to put the game on, and they somehow managed to fit the entire game, both discs worth of content, on a single 64 megabyte Nintendo 64 cartridge. I don't know why I'm bringing this up in the middle of the review, I just thought that's an awesome fact. But yeah, this game is a master class of horror gaming, and on any other list, this game would be a lot higher. I do think there are other better Resident Evil titles. A lot of people say that this is the best Resident Evil title. I think there are some that did it a little bit better, but this game is incredible. In many ways, this is the definitive Resident Evil experience. I'd give this one a 9 out of 10. On scariest to least scariest, this is one of the scarier entries in the franchise due to very high tension and daunting atmosphere and a lot of jump scares. This is number 5 on the scary list. And as far as easiest to hardest, this one's kind of middle of the road, not too easy, not too hard. This one's at number 7. Where's everyone going? Bingo? Moving up the list, we have Resident Evil 4 Remake, the newest Resident Evil title. Now, it'll be kind of hard to explain why this placement is where it is without revealing what I think about the original game. I will just say that 
it is a very, very successful remake. It's very faithful to the original and it improves on it in many ways in a lot of areas as well. The combat is extremely fluent and might be the best we've ever seen in the franchise. It adds to the scary factor of the original, adding a more haunting atmosphere. The remake also improves on a lot of the characters, uh, in particular Ashley and Luis. It takes itself a lot more seriously than the original, which is a good and a bad thing depending on how you look at it. But like I said, in many ways it improves on the original while also being very faithful to it. And it's just all around one of the best remakes I've ever played. That being said, why is it lower than the original? I think one of the best things about the original is how kind of tongue-in-cheek it is. It's the perfect mix of campy and serious and they cut a lot of those brilliant one-liners from the original and the remake, which I was not a fan of. And on top of this, they cut a lot of the interactions that you had with the villains in the original, like the one-on-one -on -one calls particularly, which I think kind of detracted from their characters and didn't allow you to get to know them as well. But overall, quality-wise, it's extremely, extremely close to the original. I'd give this one a solid 9 out of 10 as well. And as far as scariest to least scary goes, this one is less on the scary side. This one is ninth on my list. And I also found it to be one of the easier titles in the franchise, coming in at number 12 on the easiest to hardest list. See you later. <sighs> Women. Which brings me to the next one on the list, which is the original Resident Evil 4. Now I know I'm gonna get a lot of pitchforks on this one. Allow me to explain. Well first, I'll say what I like about the original as opposed to the remake. While I think that the remake's combat is extremely impressive and very fluent and fun to play, the tanky controls of the original kinda add to the tension. And I gotta give the original props just for being the masterpiece in a sense that it is. Being the first true over-the-shoulder shooter, it was in many ways the first of its kind, and in many ways one of the best to do it. It was a much-needed change to the Resident Evil franchise, and a very welcome one. And like I was kind of saying earlier, I love the one-liners of this game and just all the dialogue. It improves on the already great story with just fun one-liners. No way, Leon! Way? <laughs> It's like very akin to like Evil Dead 2, kind of, and that much I love about the game. Now why this is my fifth favorite as opposed to the top other four, I guess, also kind of goes back to the action-centered gameplay. While yes, Resident Evil 4 still has somewhat of a horror atmosphere and horror themes, it is very much a far cry from the survival horror that the series is founded on. And while I think it was a welcome and needed change to the series, it did lead to other installments in the series that were not as well received because they just differed too much from the game's original source material and it just overall wasn't scary. And personally, I much prefer the survival horror kind of Resident Evil and I much prefer Resident Evil when it's scary and Resident Evil 4 does not deliver on the scary factor. Like I said, it's a fun game. I'm just more of a survival horror type of Resident Evil fan, which is why on my scariest to least scariest, it's more towards the bottom at number 11. And for easiest to hardest, it's a little bit easier than it is hard, coming in at number nine. Oh, and this game also gets a nine out of 10 from the Bilster. Now, this is where on my tier list, I go from A rank, to S rank. I think that these next four games are all masterpieces. They are all 10 out of 10 games. I love every one of them to death. And in many ways, it is hard for me to rank them and they switch around all the time because I love them all for different reasons. <laughs> but moving on to number four on my list, I have Resident Evil Village or Resident Evil 8 rather. And you might be saying to yourself, Oh, but Billy, you said you don't like the action-centered Resident Evil games. You said you like the survival horror. And yes, I did say that. And yes, I understand that Resident Evil Village is more action-focused. That being said, I think atmospherically, gameplay-wise, just game design-wise, Resident Evil 8 does the horror a lot better than Resident Evil 4 does. I think Resident Evil 8 does everything that Resident Evil 4 does great 
except for the campy dialogue but like it does it does the villains the atmosphere in particular in resident evil 8 i think is amazing i absolutely love the fantasy gothic style and the enemy variety and the types of enemies but while resident evil 8 uh keeps a lot of the great elements from resident evil 4 such as the 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 merchant which i actually prefer the duke over the merchant from resident evil 4 the weapon upgrades the collectibles the money system the action the progression a lot of it's very much similar to resident evil 4 i just think that resident evil 8 almost does it better on almost all fronts especially like i said the scary factor there are moments of this game that i found terrifying like the beginning of the game where you immediately get thrown into the lichen ambush. That part is extremely high tension and is probably the hardest part of the entire game. Or of course, the infamous uh, basement of House Beneviento. I love how cinematic the game feels. I love how it's structured, the atmosphere, the gameplay. I've replayed this one more than I've played any other Resident Evil and I've also beat it on the hardest difficulty. I love it to death and it's one of my favorite Resident Evil titles. Now I will admit it's not without its faults despite me calling it a masterpiece and a 10 out of 10 game. The story certainly has its plot holes and its questions. Chris Redfield is extremely dumb in this game. Why he would not cooperate with Ethan sooner makes zero sense. But I will say that, I mean, that's more of like a hindsight thing. When I was playing the game, I was curious as to why he wasn't, and at the time it didn't detract from the story. It was just kind of like a mystery that I was interested in. But yeah, looking back, uh, Chris, Chris was just a complete dumbass. But aside from some story blunders, this game is incredible and it's probably one of my favorite games. So once again, rating Resident Evil Village gets a 10 out of 10 in my book. On scariest to least scariest, this falls in the same exact placement. It falls at number four. It being action-centered uh, kind of takes away from some of the horror, but that being said, like the base enemy type, just the lichens alone, are extremely terrifying when they get up in your face and they're fast moving and they sound scary. And there's also just plenty of horrifying moments in this game. I know it's very subjective and some people did not find it scary at all. I found it to be scary enough that it was a good balance. And on easiest to hardest, this is again one of the easier games in the franchise coming in at number 10. At number 3 on my worst to best list, I have Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Now part of me questioned for a while if this was even my number one. Now a lot of people say that Resident Evil 4 saved the Resident Evil franchise, and in many ways they are completely correct, it did. But in my opinion, I think Resident Evil 7 is more responsible for saving the Resident Evil franchise in some ways. After the dumpster fire that was Resident Evil 6, they realized that people didn't want these action-packed games, and they wanted something scary. And by God, did they deliver on that front. This is the first game of the franchise being a first person perspective. And I think all three different perspectives that Resident Evil games have been in, they absolutely nailed both fixed camera, third person and first person, all incredible. But I think first person for this game works magnificently. I could not imagine this game playing in any other perspective. The fact that this game is first person makes it feel much more claustrophobic, it makes a lot of the scares work more, makes everything up in your face more. It is a brilliant and welcome change. On top of this, we have this somewhat unfamiliar setting for the Resident Evil franchise. We have this like southern Louisiana swamp house, it's very akin to like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The whole game is like Texas Chainsaw Massacre meets Evil Dead, and I love that. I love it so much. The family and the atmosphere is absolutely terrifying, and just the setup of you going in and trying to find your wife and navigating through all these hallways is great. And I think that Resident Evil 7 in spirit is more akin to Resident Evil 1 than any of the games that came before it. Going back to like the classic claustrophobic uh, manner style with some excellent puzzles and not knowing what's around the corner and feeling like you're always in danger. And while this game is highly critically acclaimed, I have seen a lot of Resident Evil fans complain that the second half of the game is not nearly as half as not nearly as good as the first half of the game and some people just go as far as saying it's just dog shit. 
I 100% disagree. Well, I do think my favorite part of the game was the first part of, you know, just being in the house with Jack. Uh, I thought that was the, the best designed and it was cl closest to the original Resident Evil formula. I still think that the rest of the game had excellent design and I love all the different set pieces they use and how it was kind of like a progression from going from one villain to the next. I mean, the Jack part was brilliant, but then it goes into the Marguerite part, which is to some the scariest part of the game. I mean, Margaret is just such a terrifying villain. And then it goes into like the Madhouse Lucas section, which I also really enjoyed. I love like the hardcore like music and the neon lights and stuff. And the mini games they had you play with the VHS tapes. I, I loved all of it. And the section that the most people complain about is the boat section at the very end, which I also really liked. Uh, I, I will say it did go on for maybe a little bit too long, that being said, I love that they kind of throw you in without a weapon and and normally when you're without a weapon in a horror game, it's kind of like it's like it's almost like a safe feeling because it's like okay, I don't have to fight anything, so I'm not really in any real danger. All I have to do is just run. But that really isn't the case for this section because you need to find a weapon and there's still molded everywhere and I really enjoyed it. And speaking of molded, uh, a lot of people complain that there's not enough enemy variety in the game and that the molded are kind of a boring enemy type. Um, I see where they're coming from, but I also disagree with this. I think the Molded are an excellent enemy type, and I think they're terrifying every time they show up. They're kind of spongy, which adds to their sense of danger. And that first Molded reveal, when you walk around the corner in the basement, may be one of the most brilliant jump scares in the entire franchise. I could rave on and on about this game. It is brilliant. I love it to death. It is such a damn good game. It was terrifying. It was spectacular. I also think it's perhaps the best written game in the entire Resident Evil franchise. Sure, it has the one story blunder of why would Ethan just not call the police to get to investigate where his wife is instead of going himself. Uh, but that aside, I mean, come on, it's, it's horror movie logic. I loved the mystery of Evelyn and the reveal of who Evelyn really was and learning about the Baker family. Uh, it was just all so great. The visuals, the gameplay, the return to style, the saving grace of the franchise. It's just, Resident Evil 7 is incredible. I love it so damn much. So yeah, this game's a 10 out of 10. My third favorite Resident Evil title, depending on the day. Now on the scary list, this may come as a shock to you, to some of you. A lot of people consider Resident Evil 7 to be the scariest Resident Evil game, as well as one of the scariest games of all time, if not the scariest. I actually found two other Resident Evil games to be even scarier, which if you've been following along, are my top two games on my list. So yeah, Resident Evil 7 is number three on my scary list. And as far as difficulty goes, um, it was slightly difficult, not too bad though. Uh, it's number six on my difficulty list. I must tend to my books. Mm, it's a good thing she's not Wait a second. Claire, return your books to the library. I need them. Where'd she go? Coming in at number two on my Resident Evil list is Resident Evil 2 Remake. Once again, this changes depending on the day, and sometimes I'm like, was that really my favorite? This game is not only a fantastic remake and stays very true to the original in many ways, but it also adds so much to the atmosphere and the scares. The puzzles are incredible. The, the outline of the map is incredible. And just my god, is the atmosphere of this game absolutely harrowing. I mean, normally when you play zombie games, it's not particularly scary, but Jesus Christ, Walking through those corridors, especially at the beginning of the game, you have no idea what's around the corner and you're always, always on edge thinking that you're in danger. And it made it such a unique gaming experience. There's not many other horror games that pack that same punch, in my opinion. I mean, story-wise and progression-wise, it was great. Um, the puzzles were satisfying. Then on top of the scary factor, you have Mr. X show up about halfway or so through the game, and then he just makes everything worse. What the fuck, it's that guy! No, it's not. I thought it was the fucking guy with the hat on. Oh my god, that would have been the war- Oh, that would have been one of the scariest things ever in a video game. Alright, that's a jack. <laughs> like, you're already scared to go through these corridors with all these zombies because you don't know what to expect, and now you have this 
big invincible dude constantly hunting you down, pushing you, forcing you through these corridors that you just really want to take it slow through. And it might not even be zombies in those corridors. I mean, worst case scenario, you have liquors in those corridors and you're supposed to be quiet when walking past those guys. And next thing you know, you got this big hulking dude stomping behind you, pushing you through them. It's brilliant, brilliant game design. I understand why some people like the original more than the remake, but I think the remake is just better on almost every front. I mean, both stories are incredible, Claire and Leon. I will say my one criticism of the game uh, that really bothers me for some reason is that they didn't line up the Claire and Leon playthroughs as if like they could work together like they both retcon each other as in like like you know who kills William Birkin and you know all that stuff which is like really annoying because there's moments where they come across each other and it's the same scene as like the other person's playthrough and then there's other moments where it's just completely different so like for example you get to the train at the very end of the game as Leon and you see Claire and Sherry together and you're like well like in your head, it's like, okay, I play the Claire playthrough and see how she discovered Sherry. And like, I imagine for the most part, it happened very similar, but, but it couldn't have happened exactly the same because there was obviously, you know, major differences. I don't know. That's just like a small thing that bothers me, but that's like probably my only complaint about the entire game. I mean, ammo is scarce. It's, it's really stressful trying to aim and uh, just navigating through all these sections. I mean, every time you see something that you need to unlock or do, you're like, okay, I know what I need to do, but I don't want to do it because of how high intensity it is. It's such an exhilarating playthrough. And I had to play it for the most part up until like I got out of the police station, which at that point it got significantly less scary, but it was still great. But up until I got out of the police station, I had to play that game in like 30 minute bursts because like my heart was racing so much. I felt like I was going to have a fucking heart attack. And while Resident Evil 7 was scary, and it did have very heart-racing moments, in some ways I, I almost knew what to expect in parts. For example, like, running from Jack is really scary, but he's the only person that you really have to worry about in that section. Meanwhile, Resident Evil 2, you got fucking zombies, you got Mr. X, you got liquors, you got all kinds of shit. And it's just so damn dark, it's so hard to see, you don't know if there's something around the corner. I mean, I keep raving about how incredible the game is because of how high tension and, high, and and how scary it is and that's really why I love it so much as well as it just being an incredible remake hands down one of the best games I've ever played um, and <laughs> while I have played it again I played it with a rocket launcher so it wasn't quite as scary but um, it's like it's like a once in a lifetime experience where you're like I'm so glad I did that I never want to do it again so yeah 10 out of 10 game depending on the day Number two on my Resident Evil list. On the scariest to least scariest, uh, this one falls in at number one for the scariest game in the Resident Evil franchise for me. And easiest to hardest, this one falls right around the middle uh, at number seven. Um, it is somewhat challenging, but it's also somewhat straightforward. If Especially if you're used to the Resident Evil formula, it should... As far as like the puzzles and exploration goes, it should be mostly a cakewalk. But yeah, uh, moving on to number one. And my number one favorite Resident Evil game in the franchise is Resident Evil 1 Remake. Now, I just wanna say off the bat how incredible it is that this game looks this damn good for a game that came out in 2002. I understand that all the backgrounds are pre-rendered and that all of the detail went into the character models, but that part, that, I mean, even that much is just brilliant and, it, and the lighting and everything just looks so damn good for the time. But anyways, I digress. I think that Resident Evil 1 Remake not only is a extremely faithful remake to the original, but it improves on it in every every way almost every way except maybe the hunters but while resident a game like resident evil 2 remake feels like not really a replacement from the original resident evil 2 like for example like the original resident evil 2 and the resident evil resident evil 2 remake while resident evil 2 remake is a great remake it very much stands alone as its own experience like both that and the original can be ex 
they can be enjoyed separately for what they are. And of course, that applies to Resident Evil 1 Remake to an extent, but mostly I feel like Resident Evil 1 is just more of a straight up replacement. I mean, it's pretty much the same exact game, just with much better graphics and visuals and much better uh, puzzles and inventory and dialogue. Just everything's, everything's better. And I think in many ways, this is the definitive Resident Evil experience. The puzzles are a lot more challenging in many ways than most other Resident Evils, and I really enjoyed that much about it. See, I I like, as I was saying earlier, I like a good challenge. I don't like it when it's like a Code Veronica challenge, where it's like, literally, they give you no warning, and it's just not fair at times, and it's just really frustrating, as opposed to Resident Evil 1, where it's just genuinely challenging, and you have to, like, use your brain to overcome these challenges. I think it's a very smart game, uh, it's a very well-made game, and it's a very scary game as well. I was debating whether or not this game or Resident Evil 2 Remake was scarier because both games had me on edge the entire time. I think the main reason why Resident Evil 2 Remake is a little bit scarier than Resident Evil 1 Remake is because Resident Evil 1 Remake has a lot more backtracking and there are moments of the game where you're just gonna be walking back to where you came from at a certain point and you're just gonna be like going door to door trying to figure out what the fuck you're supposed to do and like there's no monsters or anything you're just kind of like down you have downtime just trying to figure things out which relieves the tension quite a bit but there's also moments while you're doing that where um you something new will happen and you don't expect it like for example like there might be like you might be chased by a zombie and then you go through a door and you're like you think you're safe and then that door like has banging on it or whatever and then like like it's just like you still you still think you're safe but like it's scary because there's fucking banging on this door and then out of nowhere that fucking door busts open and it's like the scariest thing in the world and on top of this you have the fixed camera perspective which just adds so much to the terror because you can't see around the corner and you have no idea what to expect but these aren't even the scariest parts of the game no the scariest part of the game was the goddamn crimson heads the first time i came across a crimson head i nearly shat myself it is by far the scariest moment I've ever had in a Resident Evil game. Just the fact that you kill these zombies and you're like, oh, thank God. And the zombies are fucking hard to kill, by the way, unless you're on easy difficulty, then they're relatively easy. But, I mean, like, you know, you really got to conserve your ammo and shit. And, like, you you finally kill these dudes. And, like, unless you blow their head off, they're, they're, they're not completely dead. So, like, you know, you're walking past these dead bodies that you've been walking past over and over and over again for like while you're figuring out these puzzles and then out of fucking nowhere they spring back to life and it's not like oh they're just back to life and they're normal zombies no they are like twice as fast as you they scream at you their faces are terrifying to look at it's awesome and the story the progression of this game the the harsh inventory management and the difficult puzzles and just the, the just the survival aspect of it i think just make this the definitive Resident Evil game. Love, love Resident Evil 1 Remake. Uh, it was such an incredible game. I, I kind of, so this was my order of playing the games. I, okay, my introduction to the series kind of was, was Resident Evil 5, but I never played that entire game at the time. I did watch an entire playthrough of the game, but I only played the demo. Fast forward to many years later, once again, I played the demo for Resident Evil 7 and I watched a playthrough of it. Resident Evil 8 was the first Resident Evil game that I played it in its entirety and I loved it. I loved it to death and that might be Why it's so high on my list, but after Resident Evil 8 I wanted to play the rest in order and I started with Resident Evil 1 remake and I was expecting like this janky old game and I was just taken aback by how well it's aged and how much I enjoyed it and how scary it was It's it's fantastic and I, I kind of part of me wants them to remake the game again in like the Resident Evil 2 remake style with the third person perspective, I think it could be scary and really well done. But if this is the only remake that we get, I'm completely satisfied with that because once again, it's amazing. So yeah, 10 out of 10 game, favorite Resident Evil game. Uh, as far as my scary list goes, it is at second place. Once again, I think this might have been number one if it weren't for the amount of downtime you have in it. And as for hard easiest to hardest, it falls at number three. It is definitely one of the harder entries in the series, as the puzzles especially are more challenging and the ammo is extremely scarce, especially if you play as Chris, because Chris only has uh, six inventory slots, which can be challenging. I actually much prefer playing as Chris. I think Jill is a little bit too easy. But yeah, um, awesome game. All of them. I love, love the Resident Evil series. One of my favorite, one of my new favorite 
video game franchises. But anyways, uh, happy Halloween, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video for all my sexy gamers out there. And if you're as big of a Resident Evil fan as I am, uh, feel free to lay your opinions out in the comments. Uh, let me know what your favorite is and what your background of Resident Evil is. And uh, hopefully the next one's great too, and I have confidence that it will be, because Capcom is on a roll. So uh, peace, and have a good night.